are now joined by tonight's NASCAR Cup Series race winner, Joey Logano, driver of the number two, 22 Team Penske Ford. If you have a question for Joey, please raise your hand. We're going to start up front with Jordan and then go to Steven and then Mark. Sorry, I was sitting on the court. No slack. Had enough gas, though. <laughs> Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Um, you know your fuel situation, but as these restarts are happening, the overtimes are happening and the restarts are happening, in your head, are you thinking these are, this is a chance for us to be optimistic and get, maybe get a win? Or are you resigned to the fact that, hey, we're probably going to run out because there's no way we can stretch it this far? Honestly, I don't know the numbers and what's going on. I, I laugh because Paul asked me what he, like what I thought. And I said, oh, I don't know. I don't have the computer in front of me. <laughs> we, we had a laugh about it. But, um, yeah, I mean, this one just takes the whole, the whole crew to do it. Um, we think about, um, you know, the, the engine itself with Roush Yates building the, the uh, engine, obviously, that can make some good mileage. Uh, Nick Hensley, our, our gas man, packing that thing full. Um, that was key. Uh, Paul having the cojones to leave me out there big. <laughs> so, you know, our engineers calculating everything. And, um, you know, I don't think we felt too good about it. Um, you know, as far as, you know, the last restart, I, I felt good when we came off of four uh, and I was able to clear Briscoe. I thought, okay, you know, I was in good shape uh, going to take the white off of four. And then they threw the caution. I still don't know what the caution was for. Um, and, and then he had to do it again. And, um, you know, I had to not only do the fuel mileage piece of it, but also, you know, you had Reddick, um, with, with tires there at the end and he was able to, to make some pretty big moves. Um, and going down the back stretch, it started stumbling. I was like, oh no, uh, I was able to, to throw a nice block on him, but even off of four, it, it stumbled and stumbled. And then it kind of just got like a quick little little bit of gas, I guess, and it kind of gave me a little squirt, and then it started stumbling again across the line, and, you know, I just couldn't get to the line quick enough. If uh, that start finish line was, you know, in the one, we don't win the race. We finished third or fourth, so um, definitely as close as you can cut it, for sure. How do you go 110 laps here on one tank of fuel? Mm. <laughs> like I said, it takes a, a little bit of everything, right? I think that's, that's really what it was. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of cautions within that, that period, right? There's a lot of cautions. So, um, you know, like I said, we didn't feel comfortable about it. But, you know, you, you go for it, and it's, it's pretty risky when you think about where we uh, were in the playoff grid. Um, you, know, you really can't afford to have a bad one. But, gosh, it's really hard to pit when you're in the lead and you're in position to win the race. So, you know, you just – Go for it and cross your fingers, say a couple of prayers, and work that all right. Joey, Stephen Toronto, CBS Sports. Walk me through that last overtime restart because I believe Tyler had pitted in overtime and he was coming in a big car on the last lap. Walk me through the final corner specifically um, as far as the defensive maneuver you made to keep Reddick behind you, and then how concerned were you about opening up the bottom for the 71 car in that scenario? Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I saw going into one that, you know, Tyler must have had a great restart. I don't really know the strategy of, of what worked out for them or not, but when he was within, you know, a car length in the one, I was like, oh, geez, so I'm going to have to block this pretty hard. Um, and, and I thought off it, too. I was like, okay, I'm good. The 71 clamped him uh, and was able to side draft on the back stretch. I'm like, I feel pretty good. And then I went down the back stretch and it started spitting and sputtering. I was like, oh, no, <laughs> not good. Uh, I had to throw another block on, on Reddick. Um, you know, and then off of four, you know, it's kind of hard to say which, which lane to go for. Um, you know, but I, I definitely felt like I couldn't let Reddick get to my outside because it would have been over. Um, so I, I definitely had to, to, you know, pick a car to block. And Reddick was the fastest car. He was going to win the race and I had a fighting chance to beat the 71 so um, definitely you know felt like it was an easy decision on which which one to throw the dirty on and then you mentioned the car sputtering um, with as close as the 45 and the 71 were to you it, did that create an interesting situation where 
you know, normally if you make that kind of maneuver, you think, okay, great, I'll come off turn four, check it, flag, and win. Um, did that create a situation where you didn't feel like you were really secure in having won to the last 100 oh, yeah. yards or so? It felt like a super speedway win to me because you don't know until you get to the start finish line. So I went bonkers in the car. <laughs> it was, you know, you think about this playoff scenario that we were in, um, being on that cutoff spot, man, it's, it sucks, guys. It's, it's not fun. Um, that pressure is real. You don't sleep good. You, you're, you're constantly thinking about it. Um, you know, and it's nice to be able to, to get this win to where you can, you know, take the next seven weeks to be able to, you know, not take a breather, but be able to at least sleep a little bit and, and start thinking about the playoffs as much as the, you know, the next few races. When you think about, you know, Chicago coming up next week and you're on a cutoff spot, like not a comfortable spot to be. So uh, just the, the timing of this one couldn't have been better. Thanks, Joey. Mark Garrow, PRN. Sort of playing off uh, his last question, you go to North Wilkesboro, total domination. You're pumped about that. That's a great way to win, right? Just yeah. drill them, pound them in the ground. What's, it, what's the emotions in winning a race like this that a lot of us stand around and go like, how did he do that? And it's sort of like the magician or the guy that stole one and you know, got away in the getaway car. Yeah, it's, um, yeah it kind of feels a little bit like that. It's, it's you know, it, I'd say at Wilkesboro, it, it was more of a relief when we won. Whereas this was just pure excitement because, you know, let's be honest, we were mediocre today. We weren't the fastest car by no means. Um, but, you know, Paul's strategies worked really, really well throughout most of the race. Um, and we just stayed aggressive the whole day and it worked out. So on that final restart, I mean, what did you think your chances were of, of making it go, going that far? I mean, were you just set on, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do? Or was there anything in the back of your mind, this, this little seed going like, I don't know, man, we've stretched our luck pretty far here. I mean, Paul said I had like three laps to the good before the final, before the restart, before that one. And then we ran a, you know, a lap and caution came out and I'm like, well, Jeez, there was one, and I got a pace and clean my tires off and then go again. I, I didn't feel good about it. I could say that much. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you just, like I said, you cross your fingers, say a prayer, and hope that uh, there's just enough gas in it. But I'm telling you what, there wasn't a drop to spare. I, I've never won a fuel mileage race before, um, something that close. So that was a, a neat thing to do. Let's go over to Larry. And then to Bob, and then to Mike. You, you kind of answered my question already about your emotions at the end. Have you ever been involved in a more unlikely finish, that, a race that you won like this? Not that, not that comes to mind. Um, nothing that comes to mind that, that was like that. So, um, yeah, just a, like I said, just a, a big one. Something that's cool, too, is the last eight weekends, uh, Team Penske has put a, a car in victory lane uh, across, you know, all the, the series that they race. So um, we were the only ones that could do it this weekend because we were the only ones running. <laughs> and so it was close, but it's cool to keep that streak alive for, for everyone at the race sh your shop. Um, Bob Hockers, Hawk Sports. You talked about the points a little bit. Hey, I proved you wrong, Bob. I know. Yay. Hey. I <laughs> ah, told you. you. You only needed five <laughs> overtimes to do it. <laughs> um, did you, I mean, do you feel like, was your season in the balance? Like, if you ran out of gas, maybe you don't make the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, that's the risk that was, I mean, just to me, a ginormous risk because you're taking what, I mean, you pit and you go back out and you maybe could finish in the top 15, maybe, versus going for the win, but you can finish 35th. Um, makes it a pretty hard call, but gosh, I, I mean, when you're winning the race, how do you, how do you not? Uh, especially when you see the, the other cars that were up there, right? Chase Briscoe, he wins. That's, that wouldn't have been good uh, for, for our playoff hopes. It would have been good for Ford, but... That would have been it. Um, you know, so there was, you know, I think the 23 was somewhat close up there as well. So just, you know, when you think about who we were racing against, uh, we, we needed to make sure that we were able to, um, 
you know, at least stay on the strategy is the same as they were. And I mean, obviously you might be biased since you won, but is like if five overtimes okay, which six overtimes would be okay, seven overtimes be okay? Is you know they've kind of changed the rules occasionally to where there was a limit, now there's no limit. Where where maybe where did you stand on that before today, and then did tonight never change your mind at all? Yeah, you know, I mean it, it obviously got pretty. You know, anytime you have like your cars running out of gas, there's like a caution, and you know they get going, they wreck because everyone's out of gas and all that. You're refiring on old tires. Everyone's sliding around. Gosh, you kind of can see it coming a little bit. Um, but, gosh, I don't know what you – I think you just keep doing it. I don't know. Like, that's the rule. You keep doing it. Uh, Mike Oregon with the Tennessee. Joey, can you talk about your history here and to win this type of race – at this facility, which was, you've got a lot, a long history here, uh, uh, where you kind of started out here and that, that all that you've been through, and for a win like this to come through with all you've been through here. Yeah, shoot, I remember sitting in here passing a tornado uh, years and years ago uh, for an Xfinity weekend. <laughs> um, you know, so to, to come back here, um, you know, I spent so much time here testing as a you know as a kid um you know he came here every other week uh for a couple day tests so definitely um you know a lot of memories when i pull into this racetrack um so really need to be able to to come back and get the second guitar um they're really special trophies you know it's one of the most iconic trophies in in motorsports right everyone wants the, the nashville you know gibson guitar and um I, got, I was lucky enough to get one of the you know, Sam Bass ones, which is, you know, obviously no one will ever have again, so that's a real special one, but this one's really neat as well. Did your knowledge of the track uh, help at all? Do what? Your knowledge of the track, uh, since you had so much um, history here. Ah, shoot, man, it's been so many years. I think I'm talking about this stuff, it was like 16, 17 years ago. <laughs> a lot of things have changed since then. I'm gonna leave. Spencer Sears, XM NASCAR Radio and CatchFriends.com. I saw that precious moment with you and your daughter, and I know you're such a daddy's girl, but she's finally at an age where she probably understands this, and it's been a while since you've been to Victory Lane, so how special was that moment? Yeah, that was the, the first time I've had all three kids here for a win. Um, you know, Hudson was in Wilkesboro, which was cool, and um, we won the championship, Hudson was there, but um, Jameson and Amelia have never been to Victory Lane before. Um, so really neat to, to have them in their Ninja Turtle jammies. And <laughs> they're, I'm pretty sure mom must have woke them up uh, for the event, or, or maybe maybe they stayed up at least for the end. But um, gosh, it just, uh, it means the world to me. My family, I love my family so much. I, I'd do anything for them. Obviously, like any good parent would, but um, celebrating together, like, you know, that's kind of the, the tear jerker moment for, for me. Um, because you know, it's not just the drivers doing this stuff, right? I mean, the commitment, and you guys know because you guys travel as well, but the commitment that it takes to, to be a professional athlete, um, the time it takes away from your family, you know, we talked about the stress, you know, that, that, you know, you try to shut it off when you come home, but, you know, you really can't all the time, right? It's something that goes through your mind a lot. Um, you know, it's, it's a grind for everybody. Um, you know, and, and you know, more times than not, my wife's, raising those kids, three of them on our own. Um, you know, just, it's just the life that we have, and it's like that for everybody, um, you know, that's traveling out here. So uh, to have the, the moment to be able to, to have that, it was uh, very, very special for me, one I'll remember forever.